time and date, we look up into the sky. We bring you exclusive footage from eclipses worldwide. We take our mobile observatory to where the action happens. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Anna. We collaborate with experts and observatories across the globe to bring you the best view of celestial events. And we ordered the devil's horn just for you. Now, we have to say thank you very much for your images tonight. We explain how and show why it all happens while answering your questions during our live broadcast events. That is a, a meteor. Find your home and even more details on time and day. And subscribe to join us next time. Good morning from timeanddate.com and I am Anna Buckle and this is Graham Jones and we're live from Lano, Texas and the sun is the star today. We're going to have a total solar eclipse but the weather is also definitely the star. As you can see we've got quite a few clouds behind us here and uh, we've been checking the weather and checking the weather and hoping and crossing our fingers and it's been changing all week. In fact, in neighboring county Burnett, they are evacuating 30,000 people from an eclipse festival as we speak. They have been worried about hail, thunderstorms, and even tornadoes. So we really don't know what we are in for today. But because of those clouds, we have spread our bets. We've got a stream from here from Lano. Um, when our, with our friend Neil Sanders, which is going to be right up the road. We've got Constantine Bikos and Jeremy Krauss. They've traveled to Arkadelphia, Arkansas with two telescopes to make sure that we're looking at this beautiful image here on the screen. And Stefan Torsen, he's gone off to Burlington, Vermont to make sure that we're getting clear images of this amazing event. So you can see there, Burlington up in the corner. Now, we also have some friends that we're working with across North America. We've got Emily Fafaro and Greg Smith from NASA and the rest of the team there. They're going to give us a feed from Mazatlan, Mexico. And we've got an old friend of ours, seventh time streaming with us, Gary Hawkins from the San Diego Astronomy Association. He only has a 50% partial, but when he looked at the weather in the US, he called us and said, look, I know I only have 50%, but it's more than you might get in the rest of the country. So we've got some beautiful images coming from there too. So Graham, we're in for a treat today, right? Yes, we are. And um, I think the first thing we want to say is that we really do hope that as many people as possible across North America get to enjoy today's eclipse with a clear sky. The weather forecasts have been fairly chaotic in recent days. Um, there's a lot of people who have traveled a long way for this eclipse. They've been having their change their plans and scramble for alternatives. And we really do hope that lots of people get a really good view of today's eclipse. Because after all, um, Anna, I mean, how long have we been waiting for this amazing North American total solar eclipse? Well, I've been waiting since 2017. I don't know about you. Right. I mean, you know, you could argue that we've been waiting a lot longer than that. <laughs> um, you know, one of the uh, one of the classic eclipse atlases was made in the year 1887 by Theodor von Oppolzer. Um, and this was an atlas uh, that contained eclipses going well into the future. And sure enough, it had today's eclipse, April the 8th, 2024 with the path of totality going across Mexico, the United States and Canada. And this was back in the year 1887 that people started waiting for today's event. And just to put that into context, <laughs> um, at that time, the United States only had 38 states instead of the 50 it does today. And uh, the country of Canada was only 20 years old. So to say the least, we've been waiting a long time for this eclipse and we've really got our fingers crossed for everybody across Mexico, the United States and Canada 
for today. Um, we're looking at some great images of the sun on our screen. Um, we've also got um, on the left hand side, um, Anna, we've got our timeline there on the left of the screen. We sure do. Um, and we see our little moon already moving across there, or a little sun and moon, you could, we could say. Um, this is our timeline. It shows when the partial eclipse starts in Mexico on the mainland there. And then it shows totality at our different with our different partners across down the bottom there. So we've got, we're looking at totality in about an hour and a half-ish. Um, so that's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a four hour show. We're, we're going to start start the show with a partial eclipse and um, yeah, we're ready to go. But you have an important message as well, right? Yes, we do. Um, so eclipses are magical, memorable, occasions um, but there are also always very sad stories after eclipses of people visiting eye doctors with eye problems that they've got from looking at the sun without proper protection during a solar eclipse and there really are no second chances on this and if your eyes get damaged there is really nothing that eye doctors can do for you. So we really do want to uh, just reinforce the safety message that you will have been hearing a lot of in recent weeks and days. And that is to never look directly at the sun without proper eye protection. Um, mm -hmm. And we're talking here about things like solar eclipse glasses uh, obtained from a place uh, that you know and that you trust. And we'd also just remind everybody to read the safety instructions that are printed on solar eclipse glasses. Uh, do check them for damage, make sure they're not creased or bent or damaged in any way. If you have any doubts uh, about the glasses, then just throw them away, get rid of them. Uh, it's not worth taking the risk. Also, don't just stand there staring up at the sun all day for hours on end through the uh, eclipse glasses. Um, you know, have a look for a short time and then take a break, share the glasses, pass them around, um, let everyone have a look. Um, yeah, we really do just want to uh, reinforce the safety messages that you've been hearing a lot of recently. They are super important. Well, that's if you're lucky enough being outside in the sun experiencing the eclipse, eclipse live. Uh, but we're going to be here also for the next four hours um, showing you what it looks like in the sky and no need for any safety eclipse glasses there. Yeah. So in 10 minutes, we've got first contact in Mazatlan. You looked up at the sun there, didn't you? <laughs> I, was, well, I was just checking the clouds, uh, latest on the cloud. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> So, and the moon will start covering the sun and we will be back soon. We're going to talk to Neil Sanders, who is sending us these amazing images from Lano. Well, they're not here on the screen at the moment. We've got Burlington and Arkadelphia at the moment. And uh, so go out, check out Time and Dead Live. Um, we've got news feed, we've got pictures, we've got tweets, we've got everything, all the buzz from the eclipse. And we're going to be back here with you soon.
you're watching a total solar eclipse here on timeanddate.com and we're really getting into it now we're super excited in 10 minutes there's going to be first contact in san diego we're looking at beautiful images there from san diego california from our friend gary hawkins at the san diego astronomy association so we're excited about having first contact from there and uh yeah graham what's happening uh, yes. Now, one thing that we've just added onto our screen there on the right hand side is our live eclipse map. Um, and this map is showing the position of the moon's shadow right now um, on the globe. So um, this is a map. It's currently showing the Pacific Ocean, which is where this eclipse is starting. Uh, the light shaded areas um, is where there's a partial solar eclipse today. There's that little thin strip running through the middle there. That is the path of totality. That is the very narrow corridor where people can see the moon completely cover the sun today. It is a very narrow strip of land. It's about 120 miles wide. It's about 200 kilometers um, but it's very long it's about 9,000 miles long around 15,000 kilometers it stretches from the Pacific across North America and ends in the North Atlantic uh, and in the middle of the screen you can see a small red dot that is where the dark part of the moon's shadow is right now so uh, right at this moment somewhere out over the Pacific a total solar eclipse is happening. And that small shadow is racing towards the east and towards the north. It's racing towards the coast of Mexico. We have a couple of numbers below the map. Um, the number on the right shows the coordinates of the center of the moon's shadow. The numbers on the right show the speed of the moon's shadow. So right now, yeah, the moon's shadow is 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 whizzing across the uh, the surface of the earth at around yeah, 5700 kilometers an hour. It's about 3 and a half thousand miles per hour. It's going to slow down as it approaches uh, as it approaches North America, but it is there. It's headed towards Mexico. We can kind of see a bit of a uh, bit of Mexico there in the top right mm -hmm. corner of the screen. We're going to keep this live map um, up on the screen for the duration of the eclipse. So we'll be able to see exactly who is getting totality at any particular time during today's total solar eclipse and we have a special treat we're going to talk to neil sanders he's down the road from us he's been graciously giving us a feed um struggling to get a feed with the cloud cover but we really want to have a chat with him and see how he's going so we're going to bring neil sanders up on the screen hi there neil how are you Hey, good morning, Graham and Anna. I'm very well, thank you. And a little bit excited. <laughs> just a little bit. You're just down the road just from us bit. here in Lano. <laughs> so where are you yeah. and what's going on? Yeah, so um, so I've travelled here from Darlington, northeast England, and we're just outside of um, Lano, not far from you guys. Uh, we've got the most amazing spot um, over my shoulder here. This is uh, Lake Buchanan. Um, so when Graham was talking about the path of the total eclipse, the center line of the eclipse literally goes through the middle of that lake. So we're just off the center and that means that we're looking at getting about 4 minutes 26 seconds of totality here. So um, it's an absolutely brilliant spot. Um, we're a little bit like nervous about the clouds, but who isn't in Texas at the moment? Um, but it's looking, it's looking good. And if there's anything that UK astronomers have, it's optimism about the weather. <laughs> yeah yeah excellent yes uh yeah looking at the clouds there neil i mean yeah you are just down the road from us and it is looking very similar to what we've got here just up the road from you in in lano and um, how's the wind on your side uh there's no there's no wind here we're pretty sheltered on this uh, veranda we're staying at the most amazing uh, ranch um so we've got a really good spot um out, out of the winds um the uh 
the shadow that you were talking about that's going to be passing hopefully towards us from the southwest sort of direction um and and yeah so the, it's 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 looking got too windy the sun's shining at the moment as long as it's doing that at um 134 then we'll be very happy <laughs> <laughs> excellent stuff yes and um yeah neil you said you're over here from the uk um you run this uh you run this amazing organization in the uk called go stargazing and you do all these incredible things to encourage people to get out and enjoy the night sky we're going to be uh we're going to be collaborating with you again in september uh in fact when we have yeah. a, a lunar eclipse coming up um could you uh could you tell us a little bit more about go stargazing and uh, and the work you do oh i will just do that in just a second as that helicopter flies over <laughs> perfect they obviously wanted to be on your live stream <laughs> so there they go um, so yeah, so go stargazing. So I'm a real amateur astronomer. I love getting people away, guys, looking through telescopes. Um, it's kind of my hobby. And as a little extension of my hobby, I run Go Stargazing, which is um, a database of stargazing locations and events um, across the UK. It's a UK-based website, and it just enables people who are interested if they uh, have a go at looking if they're interested in astronomy then it gives them all of the information they need what to do might go um and yeah it's good fun it's good fun yeah yeah it is uh, it is terrific stuff um that you guys do there so um good stuff good stuff um neil we will let you uh, uh get back to uh keeping an eye on the telescopes uh and and everything there thanks again for thanks again for sending us a feed from there we're uh, we're excited to see oh, that yes, and yes. Um, and uh yes good luck working, Graham. <laughs> excellent <laughs> yeah, no. i will get that good stuff, and, uh, yeah. i'll look at it now <laughs> good. and yeah cool and hey thank thank you for all of these fabulous solar glasses as well um, <laughs> you're welcome neil <laughs> really good really good brands no thank you excellent. good luck to everybody there back yeah. in Rano. good luck to everybody you know, chasing the eclipse across the USA. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, thanks a lot, Neil. Thanks a lot, Neil. All Here right, in cool. Lana, we've been working closely with the Visitor Centre over the past year or so. We've been working with Tony Gidros, Rebecca Flint and Kim Webb. It's a wonderful town. There's about 3,000 people living here. I'm sure there's a few more here today. Um, and they really feel like an extension of this uh, a team, this gang. They've been welcoming us here at the Visitor Centre with uh, water, coffee, toilets, all the things you need. <laughs> at least and internet and power for this eclipse broadcast so uh we're just crossing our fingers for clearer skies so that they can experience the total solar eclipse it's just amazing to experience totality so i'm really really got my fingers crossed but wherever you are be sure to look at time of date dot live that's where we have more information about the eclipse some news feed pictures all reactions on social media so don't go anywhere because we're going to be right here soon as and, well and we should also just say yeah keep an eye on our san diego feed because yes. uh that's where the action will be starting in just a few minutes that is true um we'll see first contact where the moon just starts to nibble away at the sun there in san diego so keep an eye uh, on on this beautiful picture that we're getting from San Diego. Um, the eclipse is also underway in Mazatlan in Mexico, and uh, we're going to be bringing uh, pictures from Mazatlan as well. So, um, yes, it's all just about to start. Perfect.
Hi, you're watching a total solar eclipse here on timeanddate.com and we're just getting started. We can see the moon eating away there on the sun in San Diego, California. And it's that beautiful little curve that's going, it's beautiful. And not only are we getting started and the clips getting started, but the party is getting started here in Lana. There is music, live music going on across the street and people are excited and moving around us. And yeah, frankly, quite distracting, but fun going on around here in Lano, Texas. And, you know, we're looking at first contact. There should be first contact happening right now, just above us. Let me just have a look. Uh, it's difficult to see at the moment, but there's something special about first contact, Graham. And uh, it's that little bit of the sun getting eaten away. That's right. Um, it's happening right now, somewhere above the clouds here in Lano. In a way, it's one of the most magical moments of a solar eclipse. We've spent all the months and, and years uh, planning for this event. And finally, the eclipse begins just very quietly, very unnoticeably, when we just see that very first little nibble into the sun by the moon. It happens right on schedule, exactly as all the calculations predict. And um, yeah, it's always pretty breathtaking mm. when, the, when the eclipse finally happens very undramatically um, mm. up there in mm. the sky. Um, from first contact, uh, the moon then uh, keeps eating away mm. at the sun's disk until we arrive at totality when the moon covers the whole of the sun. Today, there's around about an hour and a quarter between the start of the partial eclipse and totality when the last bit of the sun gets covered by the moon. First contact is really completely unnoticeable. Mm. Around about half an hour into the partial eclipse, that's when you can really start to notice things happening on the ground. That's when you might start to notice uh, some changes in temperature. That's when you might start to notice some strange things happening with shadows mm. that the sun is casting. Mm. Um, as the moon is eating away at the sun, it's turning the sun into a thinner and thinner crescent. So instead of the sun being this round light source in the sky, it ends up as this uh, sort of very uh, thin mm. strip of light in the sky. And where you have objects that are casting shadows, um, if you have an edge of an object that is aligned with that thin crescent of the sun, then it casts a shadow edge that is much sharper than one that is kind of perpendicular to that thin crescent of the sun. So you can start to notice objects having sharper and more blurry shadows, depending on how they're aligned mm. with the narrowing crescent sun. All of that happens yeah, around about, say, half an hour into the partial phase. Um, right now across the United States, yeah, first contact is happening um, as the eclipse sweeps towards uh, the east. For first contact, that's something you can only notice if you're really looking carefully mm. for it. Um, and of course, you have to be looking carefully using proper eye protection like eclipse glasses. and. Um, Anna, you've got, a, you've got a, a, an, an interesting message about eclipse glasses. Yes, because um, we've been handing these eclipse glasses out around town. There's loads of eclipse glasses available for, for people. They've got their ISO certification. They're from reputable sources. So people are lucky here um, in Lano to have proper eclipse glasses. But astronomers, astronomers Without Borders, our friends at AWB, they are collecting used eclipse glasses from the eclipse. And what they do is they send it to underserved communities internationally. So they take the glasses, they inspect them, they make sure that everything's okay with them, that they're not damaged or fake or anything like that. And they send them 
across the world for new eclipses. Um, you can find collection centers at libraries, community centers, um, commercial businesses, wherever you do. You just have to check. Uh, you can also go to astronomerswithoutborders.org to see if there's a local recycling centre near you. And it's so nice to know that these things will be used for more eclipses, isn't it, Graham? Absolutely. It's a, it's a fabulous campaign that they run, and it really gives all kinds of people an opportunity to see an eclipse in parts of the world where otherwise uh, they wouldn't be able to see mm. anything. So, yeah, great campaign to support. Um, stick with us here on timeanddate.live. Um, we're, we're enjoying great pictures from uh, San Diego where it's just going to be a around about a 50% partial mm. eclipse today. Um, we're coming up towards first contact in Arkadelphia in Arkansas. Um, first contact there is coming up at 1731 UTC. So in around about eight minutes from now, we'll see a first contact in Arkadelphia. As soon as the clouds uh, <laughs> reveal the sun, we'll be having pictures uh, from uh, Neil Sanders uh, here in uh, Lano. So um, uh, lots, lots and lots to come. Um, do have a look at timeanddate.live where we have um, all the updates from uh, around the world and pictures and uh, and blog posts and comments and uh, and all the latest news on there and um, Anna and I will be back here shortly
you're watching a total solar eclipse here on timeanddate.com and we're looking at some gorgeous images there from san diego california and arkadelphi arkansas we can see that the moon has started eating away at the sun so the eclipse has begun in arkansas as well so we're excited about that we have been experiencing some problems getting our images in from math atlanta some technical issues there we're really sorry about that we're trying to see what we can do uh, but we still have telescopes here waiting for totality so we're not going to miss um, totality of this total solar eclipse um, we're getting questions and comments um, on youtube about the sunspots graham Right. Uh, looking at the uh, feed coming in there from San Diego, we can see two uh, dark uh, spots on the surface uh, of the sun, and those are indeed uh, sunspots. Um, so, um, yeah, the sun is, uh, is, a, is a big ball of, of plasma, uh, kind of a big ball of charged gas. And there's lots of activity going on. There's, there's lots of uh, magnetic field activity going on. And there are some regions um, which are cooler than others. And where we have uh, these cooler regions, um, that is what produces these dark areas uh, known as sunspots. Um, now, Anna, the, the sun does have uh, an 11 year yeah. solar cycle where we uh, tend to go from very low numbers of sunspots to generally much higher number of sunspots. And we are nearing the uh, solar maximum mm. um, in this 11 year cycle. We are getting close to the period where we would expect to see a high number of sunspots. And so there has been a lot of expectation um, and a lot of people looking forward to being able to see a lot of sunspots during uh, this eclipse. In fact, um, the sun is fairly quiet at the moment, and we really do just have these two sunspots that are visible on this side of the sun at the moment. Mm. So, um, yeah, a lot quieter and uh, m a lot fewer sunspots uh, than we might have expected um, for this eclipse. But uh, yeah, on the feed there from San Diego, we can see those, uh, those two dark spots, one slightly larger than the other, um, yeah, slightly cooler regions of the sun's surface. But back home in Norway, we've been experiencing a lot of aurora lately, and I think that has to do with the sunspots, right? Like it's got to do with activity on the sun, right? It does, yeah. This 11-year solar cycle, um, it really, uh, that's really a, a cycle for how active the sun is. And when the sun is active, that's when we get more sunspots. And that's also when we get more aurora here lights. on Earth. That's yeah. right. We get more prominences. We tend to get more solar flares. Um, the sun is chucking out a lot more stuff in Earth's direction. So you're right. In, uh, in Norway, um, this winter has been, uh, has been uh, a, a good period for, <laughs> yeah. uh, for Aurora. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's just go out, look north and, and, and you might be lucky to see some. It's, it's really amazing. Does it affect the eclipse in, in, in any way, this active, active sun? Well, one thing that uh, when we come to totality, and we'll be talking about this again a bit later, um, at totality, the real highlight there when the moon is covering the sun's visible surface is that we can see the solar corona, which is the outer part of the sun's atmosphere. It's there all the time, but it's much fainter than the sun's disk itself, so we usually can't see it. Um, we can see it during totality, during a solar eclipse. And yeah, the shape of the corona, that also changes over the course of this 11 year solar cycle. Um, around solar maximum, uh, the sun's corona is uh, rather more symmetrical. Um, whereas around solar minimum, uh, the, uh, the corona is kind of more stretched out, hmm. more like a, like a pair of wings. Um, so that is going to be something for us to uh, have a look out for when we get to uh, totality. Coming up here in Lano in, uh, in what, in less than an hour, now 1834 UTC, hmm. 
mm -hmm. totality here in Lano. Mm -hmm. So we're getting close. Um, we have to say that actually, I mean, here on the ground, really still nothing, I mean, nothing to see in the sky because of the clouds, mm -hmm. um, but really nothing to see yet in terms of uh, changes in light levels, or there's really no sense at all that anything is going on with the sun up there above the clouds. But that's all going to start to change rather dramatically over the course of the next, uh, uh, what, 40 minutes. Yeah, and we're going to continue putting our eclipse glasses on, looking up, because as soon as that sky, those clouds get a bit lighter, we can actually see the sun through the clouds. And we have been looking at the sun, moon eating away at the sun, so it's been beautiful. Um, if you're lucky enough to be in the path of totality or even just in a partial area, use your eclipse glasses and take a look. If not, go to timeanddate.live and check out our live news feed. We've got pictures, we've got reactions, we've got all the interesting background stories. We even have stories from the road here in Texas, United States. So we will be back soon. In the meantime, we're going to be looking up at the sky and trying to find the sun.
You're watching a total solar eclipse here on timeanddate.com and we're getting excited. The light levels are changing here. We're using our glasses. We're looking up and what is it like 50% Graham? Uh, the, uh, yes. Uh, that is, uh, we're getting up to around 50% here in Lano. That's it's, right. Yeah. So we're feeling like it's like it changing a little bit, but weather, which case we're challenging clouds everywhere. North America is full of clouds. Um, Arkadelphia is struggling with clouds. Mexico, they're struggling with clouds. But what can we do? We can look up and see what we can see. So where are we, Graham, with the eclipse? Well, if we take a look at our live eclipse map, um, this, uh, this is on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, this, this Just above us, right? Uh, this shows us where the moon's dark shadow is uh, right now. And it is racing across the Pacific and it is just about to reach the coast of Mexico, the first city in North America to experience totality today is the city of Mazatlan mm. on the Pacific mm. coast of Mexico. And uh, totality is starting there in the next minute, because as we can see, that red dot is just about to reach land on mm. our live eclipse map there. As Anna was explaining earlier, um, unfortunately, we don't have images uh, from Mazatlan today, but what we do have um, is uh, the next city along the path of totality in Mexico. Um, once the, uh, once the, uh, the, uh, the shadow has passed over Mazatlan, next, uh, next on its itinerary uh, is the city of Torreon in Mexico. And our good friends at the Exploratorium have their telescopes on the ground there in Torreon. Um, totality there is starting at 1816. So um, that is uh, less than 10 minutes. Um, that uh, shadow we can see on our map, it's moving mm. at two and a half thousand kilometers an hour. Um, that's like 1500 miles per hour. So it is racing across Mexico. So we are hoping to bring you images of totality from Torreon, courtesy of our friends at the Exploratorium. But it's the story of the day. Um, it is fingers crossed with the clouds. We have mm. seen some beautiful images in, in Torreon, but we've also seen some very cloudy mm. clouds as well. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yes, um, anything we can bring you from totality in Torreon, we're going to be sharing that um, mm. from 1816. We're looking at just over four minutes, around four minutes and 10 seconds of totality from Torreon. And we're really hoping that we'll be able to share we are, here. We are, we have our fingers crossed. Um, what are we going to be expecting to see, Graham? Right. Uh, so as we approach uh, totality, we have the uh, we have the crescent mm. sun, which just gets narrower mm. and narrower mm. and narrower as the moon eats away more and more of the sun's disk. Um, eventually, the the crescent gets so thin, and the two horns at either side of the crescent they get so close <laughs> that they kind of come together in this one bright jewel mm. of remaining sunlight. Around the same time, we start to see the solar corona around the edge of the moon. This is the outer part of the sun's atmosphere. We can't normally see it because the sun itself is too bright, but when the moon covers the sun, it comes into view. The combination of this bright jewel of remaining sunlight plus the solar corona visible around the edge of the moon, that produces the effect uh, famously known as the diamond ring. Um, from there, we move quickly into the Bailey's beads stage of the eclipse. This is just the final blobs of sunlight mm. that we can see actually shining through deep valleys on the edge of the moon's mm. surface. Um, uh, we have these, uh, these, these, these blobs of light. That's the, the last remaining bit of sunlight we can see before totality begins. Um, then they disappear. Then the moon is covering the sun's disk completely. The solar corona uh, becomes visible. This kind of ghostly shimmer around the edge 
of the moon. Ah, oh, there you go. Here we are um, at, uh, at Torreon. We can see, right, the narrowing yeah. crescent sun. It's looking very faint because of the clouds there in, uh, in Torreon. Uh, that crescent is going to get thinner and thinner over the next six minutes until it transitions to this, uh, this diamond ring effect, these final blobs of light called mm. Bailey's beads. And then four minutes, 10 seconds of totality. It's magical. I'm very excited. It's even on the screen. <laughs> but I've got my fingers crossed for Lano here as well. So, so we're super excited here. Um, we're going to leave you to enjoy totality in Torreon. I'm blowing those clouds away with the wind here in Lano. And go to timeanddate.live and check out what's going on there. There's going to be pictures, reactions. There might even be something from Mathatlan there now. Who knows? So go in, have a look. We will be back soon, right before totality here in Lano. But in the meantime, enjoy. And we will see you back here in a few minutes.
Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a Torreon, Mexico. Wow. Thank you so much, Exploratorium. That was just just the taste and 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 i'm just i'm just everybody's getting excited around here including me my heart's pounding um there's chattering there's music there's eclipse glasses up at the sky because the light is really changing here the sky is clear and we're gonna be seeing this total solar eclipse and i can't even breathe thinking about it i'm so excited so um graham graham <laughs> help me out <laughs> um Okay, uh, let's think. I'm <laughs> checking in on our eclipse map there. Uh, we can see uh, the dark part of the moon's shadow is represented by that uh, small red dot that is racing across North America at around about two and a half thousand kilometers an hour, which is about 1500 miles per hour. It is just about to leave Mexico and cross into the United States. So totality about to hit uh, the USA. We have two locations marked along the path of totality there. The first of those locations, uh, that's us here in Llano in Texas. Um, the second marker there uh, is, uh, is Arkadelphia in Arkansas. Um, that's where we have our time and date telescopes waiting for totality there. Um, just a quick reminder that, um, you know, the sun is, uh, is what, 90% mm. eclipsed here, uh, but still, Eclipse glasses um, are vitally important, even when there's just the tiniest slither of the moon's crescent remaining. Even through uh, the diamond ring and Bailey's beads, um, eclipse glasses should be used for yeah. looking at any part of the sun. Once the sun uh, is completely covered by the moon, once uh, Bailey's beads has finished, once we're into totality, then eclipse glasses can be removed and uh, in fact should be removed, must be removed for enjoying the solar corona um, that surrounds uh, the sun. The solar corona is about as bright as the full moon. So uh, perfectly okay to look at the solar corona uh, without eclipse glasses as long as the sun's disk itself is completely covered by the moon. Yeah. And um, here on this wide angle shot, we're going to show you how dark it gets here. Unfortunately, we don't have a telescope. Uh, we have our glasses and uh, we will be looking up and we will have totality coming up, telescope views coming up from uh, Arkadelphia and Burlington. Fingers crossed, clouds and all. But yes, Torreon really, really wowed me. So now I don't know how to deal with it anything anymore <laughs> the light is changing it's just really really kind of silvery and you can almost like touch it it does not feel like twilight it's like white twilight uh, the temperature is dropping we were in 32 degrees celsius here um it's now down to 25 i can feel it it's not only goosebumps it's also the temperature dropping the birds are are they doing anything yet they're chirping away there is, there is, uh, there's certainly a lot of chirping yeah. um, going on. I think certainly now, right, uh, in the last few minutes, the light levels yeah. noticeably yeah. have uh, really yeah. started to drop here. And that drop is, yeah, going to continue over the next uh, six minutes until, yeah. right, the final minute before totality. That's when we have this sudden plunge yeah. in the light level. And um, yeah, that's what we're going to be sharing on our kind of, uh, we're, Anna and I are going to sort of clear out the way yeah. of this, uh, of this uh, image of the visitor center here in uh, in Lano. And um, yeah, we will have, uh, what have we got? We've got four minutes, 24 seconds of totality. Um, gonna be starting at 18.34 UTC. Yeah. Okay.
This is the total solar eclipse of April 2024, live on timeanddate.com. And we've just had uh, a little over four minutes of totality here in Llano, Texas. Um, you were watching our wide angle camera view um, on the Llano Visitors Center here. Um, I think you saw how amazingly quickly the light level uh, dropped just before totality and just how quickly the light came back mm -hmm. after totality mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, Anna, how are, how are you doing here? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll cry on TV. I am so overwhelmed. It was magical. It's like someone pokes a hole in the sky and it's just dogs barking, birds flapping about, people cheering. It's, it's, it really is magical. Yeah, we have, we have a, there's a public viewing area just on the other side of the river um, to us here in Llano. There was a, a wonderful cheer went up as, uh, as the last bit of the sun disappeared and the solar corona whew, popped out in the sky. And there was also just this lovely cheer at the end when the sun came back as well. Um, yeah, that was, that was quite special. Yeah, it's, it's just like a black hole in the sky and, and it's the, the silvery light. I can't explain it. It's not like twilight. It's just so silver and it's just <sighs> breathtaking. And if my heart was pounding earlier, it's just, yeah. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't have any words. I am blown away. And it really is to show how magical these experiences are. It's just, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the eclipse continues. Um, as, uh, as the moon's shadow races across the United States. Um, so on our live eclipse map there, just above us on the right-hand side of the screen, um, we can see that the moon's dark shadow, it's now left Llano. It's halfway between Llano, Texas and Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Um, on our main image on the screen there, this is mm. the uh, telescope image coming in from uh, Arkadelphia, from our time and date telescopes on the ground there. That's Constantine and Jeremy um, getting us, wow, fantastic yeah. images there as just that crescent sun gets thinner and thinner and thinner in Arkadelphia. Um, totality is starting there at 1849. So we're just about four minutes away there. Um, a shorter totality, Arkadelphia is slightly nearer the edge of the path of totality than Llano. We'll have just over two minutes, about two minutes and 12 seconds of totality coming up in Arkadelphia, starting just in the next few minutes. Um, so the totality in Llano, uh, we showed that on the widescreen for the totality in Arkadelphia. We're going to enjoy yeah. that one through the, uh, through the telescope view there. We still have, by the way, let's not forget uh, Burlington in Vermont up yeah. in the northeastern corner. Um, the partial eclipse is, is going great guns there. Um, totality in Burlington coming up at 1926. So still a lot to Still a lot, a lot to of emotions to go through. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, things are getting really exciting in Arkadelphia. So we're going we're gonna to leave you to enjoy uh, just over two minutes of totality there in uh, Arkadelphia, and uh, we will be back after that. Don't forget also timeanddate.live for all the latest photos and updates and comments uh, about the eclipse. And um, Anna and I, Anna's going to have a, a little lie down, and uh, <laughs> we are going to be back after totality in Arkadelphia.
Welcome back to this uh, total solar eclipse on timeanddate.com. And um, why we have to say we really hope that uh, we really hope that that lots of people across North America uh, are being as fortunate as we've mm. been um, today with uh, with the weather. Um, right here, we've had uh, we've had three spectacular totalities so far from uh, from from Torreon uh, uh, here in Lano and uh, from Arkadelphia. And um, yeah, in particular, we saw some uh, we saw some lovely effects yeah. um, through our telescope feed there from Arkadelphia, um, especially uh, some prominences mm. around the edge of the sun. These these sort of little uh, spikes coming off the mm. edge of the sun. Um, we were talking earlier about uh, sunspots, and at the moment there are maybe fewer sunspots than we might expect at this time because we are nearing uh, the kind of the peak period of solar activity. Um, so on the face of the sun, we kind of had a disappointingly few sunspots, but around the edge mm. of the sun, we have been treated to some mm. really uh, spectacular we could, we could see it with the naked eye when we were looking at it in the sky here in Lana as well, the prominences. Right, yeah, just, just exactly right. With the naked eye, we could just see this sort of bright red uh, sort of spike yeah. uh, on one side of the sun. So uh, we've been really fortunate um, with, with that. Um, we also got some beautiful images there of the uh, solar corona um, as seen through the telescopes um, from Arkadelphia as well. So. And it was that even round corona that you were mentioning. That's right. Yes, because we are we are near the uh, the solar max, um, as it's known, um, the kind of the peak period of solar activity. That's when we generally have a more symmetrical uh, mm. solar corona. And yes, we did see that mm. in our in our pictures there. We should say, actually, on that subject, um, we are continuing to get questions and comments on YouTube. And uh, we did have a follow up question to our to our discussion about sunspots <laughs> and uh, solar activity. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of people asking about exactly when is solar maximum yeah. going to be? When do we actually reach uh, the peak mm -hmm. of this 11 year cycle of solar activity? And uh, the short answer is we don't know for sure. Um, <laughs> the sun is always a bit unpredictable. Um, we are expecting it around July uh, next year um, is, uh, is estimated to be the peak, um, but we don't know for sure um, at this stage. Um, but yes, we saw uh, a lovely solar corona. Mm. Um, we saw some fabulous prominences around the edge of the sun. Um, and uh, Anna, kind of from the view looking up from the ground um you know what what else were the highlights um you know from 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 the ground well i'm still trying to calm down from that experience but i'm doing better at it you see graham taking over and taking care of me here <laughs> all that talk about clouds and to see the moon and the sun meet in the sky is just completely completely overwhelming um we did talk about the birds flying around. We talked about dogs barking, people cheering across the river, super excited, um, it, all those things. But also just the temperature, it dropped 10 degrees Celsius. We can, I can really feel it warming up again now, like I might need to take my jumper off at some point, but it went from 32 degrees Celsius down to 22 degrees Celsius in that time. And now it's warming up again. I had a little lie down on the ground. I looked up, I saw Venus, I saw Jupiter, and the, the corona, the round, beautiful corona. It was all, it was all as you see it here on the telescope, but just a bit more context in it. So uh, it was just beautiful. Yeah, yeah, wow. Great stuff, great stuff. Um, checking in on our eclipse yeah. map there. Um, uh, we can see the uh, we can see the the moon's shadow continuing to speed across the United States. The next marker we have on our map there that's up in Burlington, Vermont. That's where we have uh, Stefan uh, on the ground there in in Burlington. Um, uh, he's been getting uh, he's been getting fantastic help and support from uh from the uh, organizers um uh there in 
Burlington. Um, and uh, yeah, at the moment, looking good. That and lovely, uh, lovely, clear image mm. um, of the eclipse happening there. Um, totality in Burlington. Well, we have that also on our timeline there on the left hand side of the screen. That's coming up at 1926. So just uh, under half an hour. So, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, no, maybe, no, more, like, more like quarter no. of an hour. True. Uh, yes, yes. True. And True. we'll have a, a little over three minutes mm. of totality um, in Burlington. Um, looking back at our eclipse map, um, the numbers there are beneath the map. Um, the numbers on the right are showing the speed of the moon's shadow. And uh, we can see that as it now gets towards the end of the path of totality, the speed of the moon's shadow is uh, is slowly rising and just as we look at those numbers we can see them slowly ticking upwards um, this is because uh the the moon's shadow is moving across the globe and as it gets towards the edge of the globe the earth is curving away from the shadow so when we see the shadow on the map here moving across the surface its speed is is increasing on the map because it's actually kind of skimming off the edge of the globe as the earth uh, kind of curves away from it. So we'll see that uh, speed continue to tick up um, uh, towards the end of this eclipse. So, so even though Stefan is close to the center line there up in Burlington, Vermont, he's up at the Science Museum there, um, his totality won't be four minutes and 24 seconds like here. That's right. That's one of the things that affects uh, the length of totality at different locations. Uh, yeah, one of the one of the factors um, is how close you are to the center of the path. And that was really the big difference between Lano and Arkadelphia mm. in terms of our, uh, our difference there. We had about a two minute difference in the length of totality. We were pretty much in the same part of the country. The difference there was that, yeah, Lano, very close to the center of the path mm. and Arkadelphia uh, was uh, much nearer the edge. Um, yeah, Burlington and up in the northeast corner, totality times are coming down because, yeah, the moon's shadow is moving across the map yep. more quickly. Exactly right. Yes, yes. Um, so that is the next highlight coming up, totality in Burlington at 1926. Um, stay with us mm. on time and date live don't forget to check out our our amazing blog um where apana is posting uh fabulous images and reactions uh from people across north america and um anna and i will be back here very soon
You're watching a total solo eclipse here on timeanddate.com. We're live from Lano, Texas. There's live music, there's energy. Everybody's really happy. We saw totality. I'm feeling a few raindrops. So it's all good. We saw totality. Um, we've got another amazing totality to come. So um, it's all happening still. Yeah, what are we supposed to look for? next absolutely well just to say that we can uh, keep an eye out for some of these prominences we've seen some seen some uh, great examples of these today um, just to recap the sun is this big ball of plasma these charged particles there's uh, magnetic fields twisting and turning through the sun and they can cause these eruptions of plasma up away from the sun's surface and that produces these these kind of these uh these sharp spikes of plasma that we've seen some dramatic examples of today so something to look out for um, during the next totality great we will leave you so you can enjoy totality in burlington vermont and we'll see you back after
You're watching a total solar eclipse here on timeandz.com. We're streaming live from Lano. There's still a partial in the sky. It is behind clouds again. The cloud just opened for the eclipse went and it opened up and uh, we got to see it. Nature is back to normal. People are getting in their car, they're packed cars, they're packing up. We're not packing up. We've still got more fun to go here. And it's just all still happening. And uh, yeah, there's a few drip drips from the clouds here actually a little bit of mugginess i've got my shirt off so um yeah it's back to normal here it is things are really back to normal absolutely and um we have enjoyed some spectacular totalities <sighs> from the uh time and date telescope teams out across the united states today um we saw amazing totality from uh, arkadelphia arkansas um, that was from uh, Constantine Bikos and Jeremy Krauss uh, running the telescopes there. They were, Anna, supposed to be here <laughs> yes. with us in Lano, but the, uh, I mean, you know, the forecasts have been so changeable over the past few days that yesterday, breakfast time, um, they took the, the final decision to, uh, to head northeast up into Arkansas and wow they picked a fantastic spot they really read the weather maps perfectly and they got those fantastic images and um yeah, yeah. that was terrific stuff um our second uh uh time and date totality uh came from Burlington Vermont um that is uh time and dates uh CEO and chief eclipse chaser yes um extraordinaire Extraordinary, right. Stefan Torsen, um, and uh, wow, uh, a, again, a spectacular telescope view of totality from uh, from Vermont. But I, I still can't get over that view of it getting dark. Now, we had to get out of the way during totality here in Lano, but now we've got to see how dark it gets on the screen as well. And the people on the banks of the water, they're just absolutely that. yeah yeah actually another nice thing we saw on that wide angle view um in vermont is that we also saw i mean we saw that things went dark but we also saw around close to the horizon we saw that there was still a bit of light yeah. there um you know the moon's uh dark shadow um by the time it reaches earth it is quite small and uh yeah in that view from uh burlington we could mm. uh we could see uh kind of the uh, the brighter edge of the mm. shadow there by the way, it has just uh, it's just started raining. <laughs> it is it is dripping here, here in, on uh, on our in Lano, Texas. Uh, so um, yes, uh, it, it just proving how fortunate um, we've been. Um, we will be talking to uh, Stefan in Burlington in about fifteen minutes' time, so mm. we can uh, we can uh, find out more about his adventures in the Northeast. Yes, yes, um, we're getting questions again on on youtube people are curious they're asking questions it's wonderful so why does the eclipse move from west to east right we can see on our on our live eclipse map there and uh, by the way we can see that the uh the uh the totality shadow there is just about to leave land there that is the final bit of canada um, that is experiencing totality now um, then the moon's shadow um, moving out into the uh, Atlantic um, and we'll be finishing worldwide at 1955 will be the last spot on the globe to see totality today that will be out in the middle of the North Atlantic um, so right so the so the, uh, the question is right why is the shadow moving um, uh, to the east um, when uh, uh, when the Sun and the moon, as we see them, uh, move um, to the west. Mm. Um, 
Well, it is true that the, uh, the sun and the moon, they rise in the east, they travel across the sky and they set in the west, but that's not to do with the movement of the moon. That's to do with the Earth's rotation um, creating uh, the movement of those bodies mm. in the sky. Um, in fact, uh, the moon does move in the other direction. The moon does move from the uh, west to the east. Um, if you look at the moon's movement across the background of the stars, for example, you will see that from one night uh, to the next, it is slowly moving um, in an eastwards direction against the background of the stars. Now the whole thing is moving across our sky towards uh, towards the west mm. um, as the Earth rotates, but actually the movement of the moon itself is in the opposite direction uh, towards hmm. the east. Um, and so we see that uh, at solar eclipses, um, yeah, solar eclipses always begin somewhere in the world at sunrise and the shadow and the eclipse path moves to the east and ends at sunset in, uh, in another part of the globe. So there you go. There's more information about that on our live news feed on timeanddead.live. There's links to all kinds of interesting articles about eclipses. There's reactions to the eclipse in there. So go and have a look. And we're going to be back very soon with Stefan Torson, our chief eclipse chaser, very soon.
we're still watching a total solar eclipse here in Llano, Texas. It has ended, unfortunately. I did put on my uh, eclipse glasses and see the moon say goodbye to the sun. It was very special, that as well. You're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we should also um, add that we have uh, we have removed that live eclipse map now that was showing us um, the position of the moon's uh, uh, dark shadow on the surface of the Earth. Um, that's because um, that shadow has now left the surface of the Earth. Um, totality ended in the North Atlantic at 1955, so about eight minutes ago. And that part of the Moon's shadow, the part that causes total solar eclipses, it won't touch the globe again until August 2026. And that's the next time we'll see a total solar eclipse anywhere in the world. Wow. That's a while from now, but still, we'll be there. <laughs> oh, we'll be there for that one. Yes. So we've been looking around. We've built, traffic is building up on the road. Sirens are going off. Police is trying to weave through the traffic. Lano is split by a river. So there's a bridge across, single lane on each side. And that was something they were worried about with crowds. So maybe the clouds actually helped it being quite a safe eclipse here in Lano. But in Burlington, things are still going on. Stefan Torson, he delivered some amazing images of the moon and the sun and the crowds at Echo Science Museum. And we want to say a big, big, big thank you to Nina and Travis for helping him out there. And uh, we can get Stefan on now. Hello. Hi, Stefan. <laughs> Hi, Anna Graham. <laughs> Ah, oh, hey, Stefan, good to see you. And um, hey, f uh, we, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, um, the, first, the first thing we want to ask you, Stefan, is, um, you know, um, we had our Texas team down here where we were planning to have our telescopes here in Llano, Texas. But at the last minute, uh, Constantine and Jeremy decided, we decided to spread our bets and they headed off to Arkansas. Um, but you, Stefan, were always planning to pick your location in the northeastern United States, you know, at the last moment, deciding, you know, almost the day before where your location was going to be. Um, so, I mean, why did you decide to leave it so late, um, you know, to pick a location? And, um, you know, how did you eventually end up in Burlington, Vermont? The, the weather is generally not that great in this area of the US, so uh, it's very hard to kind of make a commitment at, at a single place because, well, Texas is a more likely place to have good weather. That's why we picked that you were there, obviously. But uh, for us, we, we, uh, we flew into New York and had that as a base uh, with a rental car there so we could go quite far in any direction, more or less, uh, of the path. New York is outside of the totality path, but still it's kind of close to a lot of places in the totality path. And we also had the option of flying out of New York to a bit more remote locations because New York obviously has kind of a good uh, number of flights. So that was actually, we actually had uh, an option to fly to, to uh, Indiana and, and fly and, and get a rental car there, but we, we didn't exercise that option. But we did decide on uh, Burlington after trying to find, we kind of saw the weather was going, the forecast, where actually turning this area, which is generally the worst area you know, in terms of chance of seeing it. Uh, and, and when it turned out to actually be the best, we decided uh, to, to go here. And, but the final decision was actually made this morning, the final, final decision. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. And um, I mean, well, great call, Stefan. I mean, you called it just perfectly on that. And it has been strange, actually, how the weather did sort of turn around that, yeah, we were expecting, really ex I mean, historically expecting much better weather mm. down in the southwest. But yeah, really, the, the northeast had much better pick of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, Stefan, we've been stressed over here and, and, and feeling feeling the emotional impact of the eclipse. And you've been making decisions really on the fly so how does it feel now that 
totality and, and the amazingness. And how, how was it for you to experience this eclipse? Yeah, the, the kind of the biggest fear is that you, you go to a place where you can't see it because, uh, and you can't uh, stream it. Uh, so I, I, there were, were clothes coming uh, in and we had, had clothes almost all day, but they'd be very high clothes and the telescopes uh, do a good job kind of watching through them so um and i haven't tried that before in a total solar eclipse how it actually looks so i was i was a bit sort of uncertain if this would be well could be a good thing or not but i'm very happy that we, we ended up in burlington which has been an amazing place and uh, the museum people have been super helpful to 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 uh, get us power and internet and uh, our own spot and helping us with everything. So uh, thanks a lot to the, to the Ekholm Science Museum. And did you cry like me? No, I'm not a crier, you know that. So, uh, <laughs> but it's always, uh, it's always, uh, you're kind of, uh, it's amazing. And it, it was nice that you have, uh, the kids actually felt like it lost a bit anyway. So it's kind of, uh, oh, it's still yeah. one minute left anyway. That, that's great. Because you're, you're a bit busy in the oh. beginning with uh, tuning uh, tuning everything of equipment and, and then you actually get a little bit of time to enjoy it. In uh, yeah, the I previous knew. clips in uh, Australia, I had uh, it was nearly a minute and I had like maybe five seconds I can actually view it with my eyes. But otherwise, I was mm. busy with anything. Well, you really so did, Stefan. Amazing, beautiful images. And, and we were clapping for you here uh, in Lano. Beautiful images. And it was also, it was also it was very nice to actually be here with all the crowds. There are toasts of people here, not uh, well, in Burlington uh, overall. So there's been just hearing the, yeah, hearing people's reactions. It's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're going to take a deep breath. Yeah. Uh, we will be back one last time. Thank you so much, Stefan, for joining us. And, and uh, we will be watching um, Stefan's images for, for a bit longer. That's right. We should say that, yeah, the eclipse continues until, uh, what, 2037 mm. UTC there in Burlington. So we've still got, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, nearly uh, around, you know, half an hour of uh, partial eclipse to enjoy there yeah. from Burlington. Yeah. yeah. So please don't go anywhere and we will be back soon to tell you more about what's coming up next.
Welcome back to timeanddate.com. Um, the North American continent has had three big solar eclipses in the space of seven years. Um, there was the Great American Eclipse of August 2017. Um, there was uh, a wonderful annular eclipse in October 2023, last year, that went across the United States, Mexico, Central America, and South America. And uh, today has completed the hat trick, um, this total solar eclipse across uh, Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Um, but the curtain is coming down on this, uh, this amazing run of uh, three big solar eclipses across uh, across North America. We're just really watching the end of things here in uh, Burlington, Vermont. Um, the, uh, annual, the partial eclipse finishing there at 2037 UTC. So about 12 more minutes uh, to go there. Mm. We do, however, have more eclipses coming up. Um, eclipses come around about every six months or so mm. and they come in pairs yeah. um, and uh, the next pair of eclipses um, coming up we can have a look at them uh, check the dates on the screen now here they are um, we have a partial lunar eclipse um, on september 17th stroke 18th yep. this will be visible across uh, north and south america uh, europe uh, Africa and the western part of Asia. We'll also be streaming it live on timeanddate.com. Two weeks after that, we have an annular solar eclipse across Chile and Argentina. Mm. Um, an annular solar eclipse is where we get another perfect alignment of the moon and the sun, but the moon is a bit further away from the earth and it's not quite big enough to cover the sun completely so instead of a total eclipse we get an annular eclipse uh, where the sun forms uh, a, a kind of a silhouette a, a ring of fire um, and the moon becomes this kind of black mm. silhouette against the sun um, that's on uh, october the second and again we'll be covering that live here on timeanddate.com Anna, I think you have uh, a few thank yous that we want to say uh, yes. for, for today. Yes, I have a cheat list and you have to bear with me for looking down because there's a lot of people we want to thank. And I'm going to get out of breath like I always do, but that's part of the fun. So we want to have a big thank you to our streaming partners. We've got Neil Sanders down the road from Go Stargazing UK. We've got Robin Higdon and the team from Exploratorium in San Francisco. They got saved up bacon with that lovely image from Torreon, the totality from there. We've got Emily Fafaro, Greg Smith and the team from NASA. We did miss out on their images, but we still love them very much. We've got Gary Hawkins and the San Diego Astronomy Association. We've got Jean at MSJP and we've got the team at Office Hours Global. Also, we've got Tony, we've got Rebecca, we've got Kim. They're all down back there in the visitor center and oh, we love you so much. Massive thank to, thanks to Constantine Bicos, Jeremy Krauss and Stefan Torsen for those amazing telescope images. Let me scroll on my screen. We shall not forget the wonderful people at home. We've got Gust, Gustav Nerdland, oh God, I'm saying it in English. Gustav Nerdlam, Daniel Fuglistar, Andy Ardner, Ada Opera, Jason Lydiot, Aparna Kerr, Sarah Kornberg, Matthew Gunderson, Colby Wainant, Adelbert Michelik, David Duskin, and Anya Smith. We're going to leave you with these images of the moon leaving the sun. And as always, on Time and Dent on Live, you can find everything you need to know about the eclipse. Whew. We're going to see you in September.
time and date, we look up into the sky. We bring you exclusive footage from eclipses worldwide. We take our mobile observatory to where the action happens. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Anna. We collaborate with experts and observatories across the globe to bring you the best view of celestial events. And we ordered the devil's horn just for you. Now, we have to say thank you very much for your images tonight. We explain how and show why it all happens while answering your questions during our live broadcast events. That is a, a meteor. Find your home and even more details on time and day. And subscribe to join us next time.